and welcome back to Curious by Nature. My name is Annabelle, and today we're highlighting two of our top summer crafts, including leaf rubbings and a nature kaleidoscope. Our friend Catherine will show us how to make each of these summer crafts using supplies you probably already have at home. You can also find the directions for each one in the description. If you're ready to create, let's get started. So today we're going to do a stand-up nature kaleidoscope. Um, on the museum grounds today we found all kinds of interesting leaves and bark and flowers. What you're going to need are two small craft mirrors. You're going to turn them over onto the back. Using any sort of tape that you have lying around, I happen to have this blue painter's masking tape. I'm going to leave a tiny little gap between the mirrors because it's going to make it easier for me to fold them and just tape them on the back. I like to put a nice clean sheet of white paper underneath my stand-up kaleidoscope so that um, the texture of whatever your work surface is doesn't become part of your project unless you want it to. And then just using whatever interesting objects you found, lay them inside your kaleidoscope. This is so fun. I feel like you can just play with this. It doesn't have to, you don't have to have a finished product. It can be fun also to sort of snap photos as you go along of your favorite arrangements. We were lucky we found a lot of really cool flowers here, but you can also use stones or grass, any type of leaves, twigs, make interesting patterns. And then it's also fun to play with the angle of your kaleidoscope. This one's at about a 45 degree angle, but you'll notice that your pattern repeats fewer times the wider you make your angle. Of course, you'll repeat your pattern more times if you make your angle narrower. This really relates to my work as an artist which explores pattern in nature. So I love this project. So another really fun way to continue experimenting with your stand-up kaleidoscope is to do some sketching from your nature objects and use your sketch in the kaleidoscope. So I was very inspired by this little leaf and these orange flowers that we found. And I am just making a quick design. It's fun to experiment with making different patterns with your drawing and in this case maybe it's easier to move your kaleidoscope versus moving the paper. This project's intended for kids but I just love playing with it. I could keep going and making more sketches and seeing how they look in the kaleidoscope is so much fun. So we're going to be doing nature rubbings. So a good thing to start with is a bag that you can use to collect objects from nature from your surroundings. Collect as many things as you can find that have an interesting texture. Um, leaves are great, especially if they have a very bumpy vein texture on the back. I also really like to try to find ferns or other types of leaves that are different shapes and sizes. You can try twigs and flowers, pine cones, anything else that you can find in your environment. I'm gonna use a crayon and a thin sheet of paper. So it's best to use um, copy paper or something that is very lightweight paper so that the texture of the rubbing can come through easily versus some heavier weight watercolor paper which in my experience doesn't work quite as well. Um, I'm gonna start with this interesting leaf that we found outside the Nature Museum. And I'm gonna put it on top of my paper. 
it's good to have a, a sheet underneath so that um, it eliminates any picking up any surface texture from whatever surface you're working on. And then I'm going to put another sheet on top. The trick I learned just through experimenting with my daughter on this project over the weekend is instead of using the pointy edge of your crayon to make your rubbing, use the side of your crayon. So this is a great project to do with all of your leftover broken crayons. So again, using the side of your crayon and starting out lightly. You can always add more pressure if you want to add more texture, but I feel like it's a really good strategy to start really light. And once I have the texture, I kind of like to stop coloring so that I don't fill in all of the spaces in between the interesting lines. When you're done um, making rubbings of all of your objects, you're gonna have something that looks like this. And the next thing that you're going to do is get out your watercolor set. So I like to choose colors that contrast with the color of the crayon that I used. Um, and it's also fun to try out using a white or a clear crayon if you have one laying around um, so that your design is a complete surprise. But um, in this case, we used blue. So I'm gonna use a little orange and red. And the reason this works so well is that the wax kind of repels the water. So again, I'm using washable watercolors trying to get as much pigment on my brush as I can. So for this one, I used a clear crayon. You could also use a white crayon because it's the same color as the paper. And that's kind of fun because you don't really know what your design is gonna look like until you start adding the watercolor and revealing the invisible pattern underneath. So when your watercolors are dry, you can see that the patterns that you made when you were doing the rubbing with your crayon are really starting to pop. That's our show for today. We do hope you had fun making these nature crafts and maybe you got inspired to make new crafts with other items from nature. Be sure to send us a photo of your own summer crafts on social media. Want to continue creating? We've picked out these videos just for you. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time on Curious by Nature.